Welcome to Smarter Circuits. I'm your host, Ian Klein. In this unexpected, unplanned episode, I'll be replying to a video submitted by a viewer. I'll also be giving a warning to viewers looking to purchase homes built prior to about 1983. I'll get to that part shortly. First, I'd like to take a look at the video submitted to me by Greg Adams. Hey, Ian, my name's Greg Adams here. Hey, thanks so much for making these videos. Uh, I think, hopefully I found you just in the right time. Uh, I had this home inspection done yesterday. Now, I'll just give you some prejudice on this. This is a, a the house is built in 1964. I'm looking to buy this house. I got to know something by uh, next Wednesday, or actually Tuesday of next week. Anyway, I did a little research on this. I didn't know when the inspector called me. I didn't know what in the world we were looking at right here. I have, uh, I'm not scared of, uh, of this system. I just don't know anything about it. Um, I've got, I've, I'll date myself. I was uh, went to DeVry Institute Technology in 81. I did basic electronics. I worked for the power company and worked in meter communications. So I know exactly, I know pretty much how low voltage systems work. Uh, I was trained on, you know, at that age of, the, you know, the um, electromechanical. I still did a lot of electromechanical. So I kind of get it. I don't know these systems. The realtor's supposed to give me some more information on it. It's supposedly... It's a legacy system is all she could tell me. And these are the pictures I have right now. I'm supposed to get some more information. And uh, they, she sent me to this, um, you know, the Kyle switch. I've watched your Shelly Pro thing. I'm trying to go watch a few more of those videos. So anyway, my my, my question to you is, and you're probably going to need a part number. Is this something, you know, to scare me away, something to deal with? I watched some stuff on conversion. How much, and of course, I know it probably does on the relay and everything. But, you know, is it feasible to... Uh, you know, kind of convert the system. Uh, this house is not really big. It's only a little two bedroom, two bath with a deal. It's built in 1965. Uh, it's in uh, East Texas. Uh, you know, it's a mid century modern. Wife really liked that. So, but we're running into this issue here on the electrical. So, just need your input and your help. Uh, if you can give me any kind of direction, I sure would appreciate. Again, thank you for putting this together. And I'm going to watch more of your videos. I, I like what you're doing right here on the home uh, automation. So, um, yeah, I'd like to make it a quote unquote smart home. Anyway, thanks, guy. And I look forward to hearing from you soon. Thanks. Greg, thank you for your kind words. And let's see if I can shed some light on the nervous system of the prospective purchase. First, I want to make sure to point out that I am not a certified electrician and you should always consult your local laws and regulations regarding ratings requirements before embarking on a conversion from older wiring systems. Sometimes rewiring is necessary, but that doesn't mean all hope is lost because there's a sneaky money saver involved I'll talk about shortly. Let's look at Greg's system. I just want to take a moment to say that this is the single neatest wiring job I've seen on one of these low voltage systems, and the generous use of wire nuts is a good sign for anyone who wants to work on this conversion. I believe what I'm seeing in the bottom right is a transformer or power supply for the relays in this box, or perhaps even both boxes. I see six straps where the familiar shape of our solenoid relays is visible. Those look to be in excellent condition, all things considered, and if this were a system I were converting, I'd hang on to those as a souvenir at the very least. I can see that the box far left and barely in frame is the real trouble you may run into, which I'll actually save for the end, and that would be the circuit breaker panel. I'll take it from the description of the house size that these other two are likely the only two relay boxes, and you're looking at no more than 12 to 24 relays. Although only six are readily visible, and it's hard to identify the devices behind them, a common arrangement was a dozen per box in these, as the transformers generally supported about that many relays anyway. So, supposing you had 24 of these, which, given the house size, I'd think a dozen more likely, the most you'd pay for something like the Shelly Pro 4PM is $100 for every four relays, or $300 to $600. There are two things that may complicate this a little. One, there is a slight possibility that the strange thing in the corner is not a power supply, but rather a dimmer module. This would complicate compatibility research and part selection, but not overall conversion, and may be something you want to add later anyway. Shelly also offers dimmers, but the bulb compatibility for any dimming technology should always be researched by part numbers.
The second thing is that these look to be four-wire relays, meaning you have piloted switches or switches with lights in them. If you want to keep this functionality, you'll need to do some much more involved work that I'll simply have to cover in another video but it is still workable. I'm not sure of the condition or type of wiring this is, but it looks like you might end up at least running a new ground, which is cheaper running the original way than in the traditional way as far as wire length. If you need to rewire from the actual power to fixture wiring, it could get costly. If you can do it yourself, it's much cheaper, but let's face it, heavy gauge solid core wire isn't cheap. If all your wires are good, you may need to work out a double relay system, a video I've been planning forever, whereby you control your Shelly relays with a middleman relay to handle the 110 volt and still use low DC voltage for the existing switches and wires. Now, after all that, let's talk about your real issue, that Federal Pacific Electric breaker panel. Up to this point, I'd say if you don't mind throwing down one to $2,000 to really convert this system and make it nice for many years to come, this is a beautiful example of these systems and conversion should be fairly easy. That FPE breaker panel, however, is a hazard that must be replaced immediately. The wires that are connected to it will need to be very closely inspected for deterioration as they may have been overloaded for extended periods of time on those breakers and brittleizing under the heat without tripping the breaker itself. In 1980, these breakers were investigated for failing to prevent overloads, which resulted in thousands of house fires. FPE was acquired in 1979 by Reliance Electric, who promptly discontinued the faulty product, but many of these were installed and overlooked for decades obviously, resulting in house fires so frequent that in 2002, emergency recalls were issued on the breakers that had already been found faulty two decades earlier. Hooray for effective building code compliance enforcement pretty much anywhere on the planet. So, if you think you could stomach replacing more or less all of the relays, breakers, and possibly some of the existing in-wall wire and fixtures, or at least paying someone else to do it, you may be able to do some very handy things with that system. Two side notes I'd like to make before I close the video. One, I love Greg's wood paneling. And two, the fact that this wiring is so meticulously organized and everything here looks so clean makes me think, especially in the mid-1960s, the person that routed this system took exceptional pride in their work, and that level of craftsmanship and knowledge may have been what has saved this house from fire all these years with that FPE panel. So whoever that person is, my hat's off to them as well. Well, if the rest of that home is built with the same care, Greg might have a real gem there worth putting a little more love and cash into. Again, I really want to thank Greg Adams for his question, which gave me the chance to do a surprise video and talk about safety a little. For all the viewers out there, I do hope you enjoyed the video, and of course, if you did enjoy it and haven't already done so, please do subscribe to the channel. If you want to know what's going on between episodes, you can follow Smarter Circuits on Twitter, at Circuits Smarter, and if you'd like to help make more and better videos possible, consider becoming a patron on our Patreon page linked below. Thanks for listening to me ramble, and I do hope you'll join me for future videos as I continue exploring Smarter Circuits.